time for business and as we promised earlier we are going to be doing further analysis on the revocation of the licenses of uh, nearly 400 microfinance and microcredit institutions. What a day it has been. We are back yeah. to the same issue yeah. again. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Mm. And Sandra Fenu, she has uh, all the details, Sandra. Yeah, thank you, Israel. Good evening. And if you're just joining us, the big news is that Bank of Ghana has revoked the licenses of 192 insolvent microfinance companies with effects from today. In addition, licenses of another 155 insolvent microfinance companies that have been seized that have actually seized operations have also been revoked the bank of ghana in a statement said that it has subsequently appointed eric nipa as receiver for the specified institutions in line with its regulations joining me on the phone lines now is banking expert dr richmond Ituahene. hello doc good evening and thanks so much for your time good evening all right 386 of them that's quite huge are you surprised that the regulator actually allowed all these into the system in the first place uh i'm surprised that you are surprised <laughs> i could just imagine licensing over 400 institutions all right yeah i'm surprised that you are just surprised very very surprised what could be the reason why would, do you think that the regulator actually do you have to blame the institutions or the regulator actually failed to do the right thing in the first place um first i would like to call it as a serious regulatory failure very very failure a big one because you see once you when you license them you're supposed to supervise and especially you take into consideration your regulatory capacity unfortunately they just let them go through it, and nobody talked about uh, supervising them. So for me, I put the blame squarely on the regulator. And now the institutions are suffering for it. Yes, that is what happened in the banking sector. Mm, okay, they let's go. License, they will license 33 mm -hmm. and 36, and they won't be able to regulate them. And then the people, will, people deposit will suffer. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the exercise itself. Uh, you've yes. seen of almost 400 of them, the licenses yes. have been revoked. Should it have been done in phases or the numbers is quite okay to go at a goal? Well, once you have the resources to, 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 be, to, do, to do the cleanup, I think it's appropriate to take it in one whole bunch and then do it and do it well. Mm. If you keep on rescheduling some and rescheduling them maybe by the time you finish the debt would have been interest would have accrued to such a level that what you have could not compensate those who whose money are being taken care of right but not long ago the bank of ghana stated that they have received almost a billion towards this very exercise but the association of microfinance institutions was also saying that they have not been properly informed about the structure of the cleanup itself and they, they've, they've aired this view and so this is coming in and that concern coming from them do you think that you're going to end up like what happened in the um commercial banks cleanup exercise that we experienced few months back well i listened to the i think one of the executive secretaries speaking on one of your stations and i i thought if they were very proactive they would have known this a long time and they would have gotten Bank of Ghana involved. Bank of Ghana is a regulator. You don't expect them to leave their place to come and see you. And I think that the association should have been more proactive because this thing didn't start yesterday. It's been going on for years and years and years. And what did they do themselves? So, but if they want to find the modalities and the modalities by which Bank of Ghana is going to see the cleanup, I think Bank of Ghana will be prepared to. Is on a transparent institution. They will be prepared to speak to them and tell them how they're going to do it. Okay. Now, yes, we can say that the Bank of Ghana is making good on its promise to sanitize the microfinance sector. But is this also going to hurt the already bruised confidence in the banking sector, considering what happened when we went for the cleanup exercise of the commercial banks? Well, I mean, I yes, have to. <laughs> I heard one speaker say not quite too long ago, the piecemeal approach is what actually worries me. You see, instead of doing it holistically, we seem to be taking it uh, piecemeal. We do this, tomorrow we do that. The whole system needs a cleanup. I think we need to be very proactive and holistic. Either we borrow for the whole system and clean it and damn the consequences. But the way we're doing it, we do have today. Then the next six months we do. And all these things have effect on the confidence of the 
they deposited. They have confidence on the whole system. Mm. So for me, I would have thought that instead of the piecemeal approach from the bank to the microfinance, maybe rural bank, and then later on savings, we should have been very bold to build, to do one holistic bailout, clean it decently. Because we are not the first country to have done that. I mean, countries like America, when the AIG, the insurance was in trouble, and the JP Morgan were in trouble, they did took the bull by the horn and did a complete cleanup once and no more. But the way it's going, we do have today, tomorrow we do have, it all impinges on the confidence of the market. So mm. I believe that for way forward, we should be more proactive and take a holistic approach in bailout. Other than that, we, the confidence will still go down. Right. Okay, so Bank of Ghana is telling us that this should leave us with about 137 companies. Is this too, too much? Well, it depends upon whether they have the regulatory capacity and their resources. And I overheard... Do you think they have the regulatory the... capacity? Do you think they do have it? Well, 170 companies, too, for me, is too, too much. Mm. Yeah, they, they, I don't think it will be... Because we have already 140-something rural banks. And then we have this microfinance. And then we have this savings. I believe we should take our time and structure it in such a way that our regulatory capacity will be able to do the job properly and adequately so that the system, the, we will have a, a better financial banking sector. Okay, so when you, 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 you watch or you read a statement that was released today by the Bank of Ghana, and the reason as to why they are revoking this license, they have also instituted some measures, and let me just take you some of them. They said that they have introduced a proportional corporate governance, and also the establishment <laughs> of fit and proper, as well as risk management governance? directives. <laughs> Don't be surprised. Yeah, so, yeah, so, and then part of it is also risk management directives risk has also management. been... The same thing with the bank. Yes, so are you satisfied with this? Would this solve our problems? Well, I think they need to strengthen their regulatory capacity. That's the first one. You see, microfinance is not a bank, so you need to understand the, the model and the way you, you fashion your regulation. Because, you see, it's in other jurisdictions, microfinances are developmental institutions, or such in Ghana where... They are doing the, the lending and borrowing money. Mm. So they, they should get up seriously and in, improve on their regulatory capacity so that in future we will not have this thing. And then also, as they said, corporate governance. This corporate governance thing is, is all over the place. But how are we implementing and how are we enforcing it? And I believe that if they really want to ensure that it's applied, it's very, Wait. very... Ah, we are grateful for your time. That's Dr. Richmond Itwahene, and he is a banking expert. We've also been speaking to an economist, Professor Gottfried Bogin, on the development. If you look at the size of the bailout relative to our GDP, it's very huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that itself may even qualify that uh, we were in some form of crisis. Mm -hmm. If you look at the percentage of GDP mm -hmm. that is being uh, injected into this bailout. Mm -hmm. so, but I think that the uh, Bank of Ghana has been very bold. I, I think it hasn't been that easy. Uh, it has taken a lot of work, a lot of analysis, even coming out with the list and doing all those analysis. It's, it's been uh, a lot of work. And I think that um, we are all thankful to the extent that um, we are getting to the end. Of course, apart from the microfinance institutions, there are other deposit-taking institutions like savings and loans that will also have to be cleared. But in, in proportion. It, is, it would not be as huge as what we saw in the mainstream banking mm -hmm. that we saw. And, and, and for that reason, I think that uh, this needed to be done quite quickly also because um, um, there are a lot of Ghanaians whose uh, monies are locked up with microfinance, with savings and loans and all of that. Then it may affect the confidence in the banking uh, or in the financial system mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day. All right, so the conversation has just begun. You can catch all the updates on our platforms on joynews.com.